is happening once again <laughs> fiverr friday we are here super excited to be coming to you live from williamsburg virginia my name is anthony pika this show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that i seem to step on well, I have to say, we're at Friday. This is one of my favorite times of the week because of this very moment of the day. I love connecting with you all and taking your questions. If you're new to a Fiverr Friday, uh, it's really a wonderful session. What we do is uh, you come on and ask any question you have of Fiverr, and I do my very best to answer it and help you out. And the whole point of this is to help you grow your business and take advantage of uh, a platform right now that is really, I mean, defying kind of all odds. I mean, I have to tell you, of all the times in the world and all the, the horrible things that are happening, you know, um, this, you know, Fiverr is a place that is set up, I think, to bring in way more business for voiceover artists and freelancers than most other sites just because of the nature of the fact that this is a site that is positioned properly for people to find it small businesses and entrepreneurs who who need to continue to work and now they have to work from home and find services and are trying to also watch you know their 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 piggy bank if you will uh, it's a great place to be so I'm excited today to be you know doing this this show. Um, so what we do is basically, if you have a question, go ahead and post it. You can either post it on Instagram. I uh, will see that on Instagram. You can post it on YouTube. Now, some some of the places on Facebook aren't working, but if you're posting something through Facebook and you're not seeing it come through, then you know not necessarily it's not necessarily happening. But uh, hopefully that you know it it will work because you know Facebook switches all the time, so that's always a challenge. Uh, what I would like for you to do if you're on YouTube, you know, please go ahead and post any questions, comments that you have you'd like me to answer or talk about when it comes to Fiverr. So today I want to uh, bring to you something I think will help you grow your business on Fiverr and make some extra money. You know, we live in a world where uh, even now more than ever, people are searching for specific needs. They need specific things, right? They need a voiceover artist, but they need a voiceover artist that does this, or they need a voiceover artist that has this tone, or they need a voiceover artist that specializes in medical narration. That's big right now. I'm doing a lot of medical narration, IVR, um, you know, small commercials, online commercials about companies helping people, you know, with, uh, with the coronavirus and things like that. You know, I'm doing a lot of those types of things, very specialized and unique, you know, situations. So for us uh, on Fiverr, what it does is it allows us to go about creating new gigs. Okay. And, you know, when you're talking about, uh, on Fiverr, whether you should create multiple gigs. Well, first and foremost, Fiverr offers you the ability to create multiple gigs. And the reason they do that is because they want you to be able to put out different services within a category, okay, that are either priced differently because of the type of service, offer a different sort of makeup for that service, OK, um, or, you know, offer a specific uh, need that is separate from another service. So they offer us as freelancers the ability to set up all of these things, which is absolutely wonderful. But it also plays a different part. And this is where it can help you get business. The reality of it is, is that the front page has uh, probably 20 to was it 20 to 28 people on the front page. OK, and that gets the majority of all of the work. Right. So if you are not on that front page, you're not going to get a lot of work. However, there are multiple search terms that people go in and type in the little uh, search box for. And the more places that you can be that you will pop up under, the more likely you will get business. And the more likely people will see you, and that's what's needed during this time is for people to see you, okay? It's so important to be positive right now and to project that through you hitting the ground running right now, not going under a rock. 
You know, they, there's that age old say, uh, saying or that that belief that, uh, and it happens quite honestly with a lot of businesses when tough times start or they happen. Uh, the first thing to go is they slow down on their marketing and they slow down on that thing. We cannot do that. We must take the opposite approach. We must speed up and do more and put ourselves out more and put ourselves in all sorts of places. Okay, we've got to spread the net like I put in this um, as I put in this because if you think about a fishing net, all right, I want you to think about a fishing net. You've got to throw out a fishing net. The wider your net, the more fish you are going to catch. And it's the same thing here. If you are just in one place throwing one line in the water, that's a big difference than you throwing out a massive size net. And we throw out a net by putting out samples everywhere, adding multiple gigs on Fiverr, utilizing the tools that these sites that are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to advertise to our advantage. OK, if you're wondering what you create, look at the categories. All right. Maybe you want to create a gig where you do a three day delivery and then another separate gig for a 24 hour delivery. Maybe you want to create a gig where you're going to offer, you know, the that crazy voice that you love to do with your family. Maybe you're going to offer a gig where you're going to do medical narration. OK, uh, maybe you're going to offer that gig where you do e-learning or audio books or, you know, uh, 15 to 15 second radio spots or 30 second. radio. The beautiful thing is you can specialize in all sorts of areas and it helps you get found. That's the whole point of this. It helps people find you. And that's the most important thing. Eyeballs are the currency of our age. Being able to get people to see you, that is the true currency. So the better you are at that, the more business you are going to get and the more consistent that business will be. So you want to remember that net analogy I said and you want to throw out as big a net as possible. All right, so let's take some questions. I want to hear what's going on with you guys, what's happening. Don't be afraid to tell me what's going on on Fiverr and, and have a great conversation about it. I'm really – I am very um, – I am – optimistic about what is happening on Fiverr, but I am also, um, you know, I'm also aware of what's happening in the world and my hearts go out to all the people who've lost loved ones as well as family members who are sick and so forth. Um, my thoughts and prayers are with you. So there is that. And, and that's a constant thing I think on all of our shoulders right now. But at the same time, what I believe we all need, too, is we need people to also be optimistic that we're going to pull through this. And one way by doing that is putting out your, your services and your samples and your goodwill so people see that, you know what, there is positivity, there is hope for this time. All right. And, and I know it might seem weird. What does that have to do with voiceover? I think it has everything to do with voiceover because voiceover is just a vehicle. All right. We are in the business of hope. All right. Of communication, of giving either positive messages or negative messages. I mean, we are com we are in the communication world. All right. And our words matter. I have done more uplifting and inspirational pieces in the last week than I've done in the last six months. It has been um, it has been truly moving to see the amount of people coming together. There's still a lot of trouble and and uh, divisive you know feelings and and that's understandable. But I just I just I think that if we stay positive, put ourselves out there, do our very best to help as many people. Uh, as possible. We're all going to come out of this, hopefully, for the better. All right. Please, please, let's go ahead and comment. Let's talk. We've got uh, Mooney VO. What's up on Instagram? We got Voices by Ashton. Hello. We've got Jonathan uh, or Jonah. Excuse me. Jonah, it's good to have you on Instagram. If you guys have any questions there, don't be afraid to ask. All right, let's head over to YouTube here. We've got Embodied Entertainment. Let's see. You got uh, did my 10th order for level one seller. Nice. And I have every other requirement done. The buyer didn't review it, and Fiverr automatically marked it as done after a while, so it's completed but no level one badge. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that happened. Remember that uh, it's, it's monthly, so every 14th. Uh, Fiverr reviews your stuff and then they determine whether or not you move up a level. So if it happened on that date or right after that date, 
You know what I mean? You you might not have got it because of that. But uh, just keep plugging away, and, and I know you'll get there, man. All right, let's see. Rudy, what's up? Hey, Cowboy. <laughs> hey, Rudy. Uh, will I not get a badge until they leave me a review because I have all the requirements now completed? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think the review has anything to do with it. It could have been simply because you it was at the wrong time. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, let's see. RJ, can you expand on the proper way to utilize the new SEO title area? Yeah, thank you, RJ. So something new on Fiverr that um, that they've kind of implemented in the last week uh, was the SEO the SEO title, and they call it an upgrade. Uh, so basically, you go on to your Fiverr account, and in the, the first part, when you're putting in your title, there is the SEO title section of your normal title, but then there's a little upgrade tab, and you can click on that upgrade tab, and then a little box pops up underneath that talks about, put you know, you can, it, it kind of takes the I will out, basically, and puts that down on the bottom uh, into a new thing that is 50 characters instead of 80, which is the above title. And the idea beyond, behind that is that for SERPs, right, which for the uh, the search engine optimization and all that stuff, right, it, they're, they're trying to make it even more optimized for the search engines for like, you know, on Google as well, because they're trying to help people uh, rank as well better in Google to help them get more uh, traffic as well, right? So with that being said, you know, I personally, I've, I've heard many different things. We have a group called the Fiverr Elite Group, which I love. We meet every Saturday, and we were actually talking about this very thing last Saturday and how to utilize it, and it was great because we had multiple people doing multiple things that gave uh, really some great advice. I personally, like no matter what I do, I like to make sure that it makes sense, so meaning that I actually put – my this is just what I did. I actually put I will back into my my uh, my my uh, title on the SE uh, for the the SEO uh, the new SEO title box so that it was more coherent and I had to make sure that it was it was uh, shrink down enough to fit within that 50 characters. I've seen some people more so not care about that and just make sure they have some you know the right keywords in there. It doesn't have to make grammatic sense. Either way, now what do I recommend? I recommend always that you try to make it make sense because if someone sees it, I want them to feel like it's professionally done. So if they read it as the first line, you know, uh, on Google or a search engine, it looks that way. Now, does that mean that it will rank better than the other way? I mean, that that's I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. There's so many other factors that go into that, right? But my suggestion is is that you they're going to automatically populate your title, but make sure that it makes sense. That's that's my recommendation. It makes sense like, you know, I will record uh, an American male voiceover or an American female voiceover or I will record an e, you know, e-learning voiceover. You know, I, I like to keep it concise, short, but also to make that it makes sense, okay? All right, I hope that answered your question, RJ. Uh, RJ, great, great job there. Uh, Flip, what's up, my man? Zach, you know my situation. I'm still trying to figure it out. So, um, Zach, you had a, a great, um, uh, a great question, and, and hopefully, you don't mind me sharing kind of the idea with everybody here and what happened. So, this is going to happen a lot, you guys. Basically, because so many people are home, and so many businesses are really doing a fundamental shift. I don't. I honestly believe life will never go back to the way it was before. Just like 9/11 happened, and life never went back to the way it was before. Okay, this happens. Life will never go back to the way it was before. Uh, I I believe we will still come out stronger than than as as a world than we ever have. But it won't ever. I mean, change happens, and we all have to be a part of it and be aware of it, and at least accept that it's there. And in this particular case. We have a lot more people coming on, and they don't know how to use Fiverr in the platform. So, with businesses like Voice One Two Three, on Voice One Two Three, you know, you send your own invoice. Like people per hour, you send an invoice. There's a lot of places that have you send your own invoice through them platform or separately. So, people on Fiverr, they're going to come on, and they're not going to know how the platform works. They're not going to know that Fiverr is really strict. 
And by the way, Fiverr is not going to be angry at the customer because the cu because they want the customer there, but they will be angry with us and the freelancer, okay, for not following the terms of service. So if someone comes on there and they ask you, hey, I'd like to connect with you. Uh, here's my email address. Send me an invoice. Do not ever send anything through Fiverr other than what is done by Fiverr. Now, on a side note, okay, I don't recommend this because, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, Fiverr did the work to get them there. But technically, if you have their email, you could send them an invoice to their email. Fiverr would never know. Okay, but I, I, I don't recommend that. I recommend staying through Fiverr because the more work you put through Fiverr, the more business you are going to get. Right. Because the algorithm works in your favor, the more work you put through. But but this is important to understand. And I had another uh, student of mine who I coach um, and they had a, a really tough time because a client was relentless about working with them and, 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 and giving them their information and trying to contact them because they didn't want to con they didn't want to use the messaging system through Fiverr, but they were still willing to work through Fiverr. So some so the tech stuff got like text messaging, um, phone numbers got exchanged and, the, and and that my you know, my student got got kicked off of the platform and they're having to start all over again. I mean, these are the things that happen. Fiverr is going to be uh, 100%, 150% now more than ever trying to make sure that the business on Fiverr stays on Fiverr. Okay, so my suggestion to you is when that happens, kindly let them know, you know, that thank you, um, but, you know, I would like to work through here. And if they're refusing to order through Fiverr, I mean, you, you got to let it go. I know it sucks, especially if you're just starting out or you want that business, but you got to let it go because it's worse to get kicked off the platform, trust me, than for one person, you know, where they won't actually use the platform how it's made. Okay, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, you know, be uh, sensitive because there's going to be a lot of people who come onto the platform now more than ever that don't know how the platform works because they're used to different. I mean, Fiverr's changed. I mean, we all know this, but I'll repeat it again. Fiverr's changed how online business uh, with service based business, like business to business services are done. Let's be honest. They changed it. They went through hell in a handbasket while doing it. But they've changed it to make it more of a product. Like our services are more like products on Fiverr, and which I love, right? Because services are a lot more difficult. Think about it. Now, I know it will be different for us because Fiverr holds on to that money. But you know that the client's already paid. And you know that it's safe. The money's safe within escrow. Whereas in a service, you don't get paid usually until the end, right? Somebody comes out and fix something at your house. You don't pay them until you're done. OK, the same thing with, you know, a lot, you know, most other services. But now, you know, I, I want I take all my money up front. I make people pay first just because it helps both of us. To me, it feels like I, it helps me know that I'm going to do the best job I can and they're not going to stiff me over. And in Fiverr's case, you know that they're paying up front. OK, and if they don't pay and they refuse to pay you and they want you to do all this other stuff. OK, a lot of times that's also there to protect you. So it's put in place to protect you. So another thing to think about. All right, uh, Zach, you know, look, great job on questioning whether or not you should do it. And, you know, hopefully that helped out. But it's going to happen more and more. And also there's a lot of scams that go on, too. Unfortunately, when, when things are as tough as they are in the world right now, people are still going to try to scam us. So we got to keep our guard up there. Uh, let's see. Rich says, great topic. And thanks, man. Uh, Neil says, just eight more subscribers for you to reach 1,000. Thanks, Neil. I know. Only eight more. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I know most of you have. And thank you so much. Uh, and if you're watching over on Facebook or Instagram, head over to YouTube and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, it would just be a, a real wonder to get to 1,000. But, you know, even if I never got to 1,000, you all are amazing. Um, and thank you so much. This community is wonderful. And I absolutely love coming to you live every week. And I was very excited to be able to come every day this week. That was real awesome. You guys have been so supportive. So um, thank you. Thank you, Neil. Uh, let's see. John John says, Fiverr has a gig bundle package. Basic standard premium. 
I use it for narration to price range, different word counts, etc. Do you re- recommend just separate gigs instead of the gig bundle package? Thanks, John. John. So listen, um, the gig bundle package is available uh, outside of the actual voiceover category. So everyone else on Fiverr uses this gig bundle package. All of Fiverr used to be that way, but I would say about, how, and don't quote me on this, about a year ago or so, maybe a little longer ago, Fiverr switched over the voiceover section to words. Um, now, but like if you do in any of the other music and audio places like audio, like uh, audiobook, the audiobook production or uh, different things, it's all in gig packaging. Or gig packages. Uh, so for for me, I love the word counts because you know it it is again kind of in the idea of a product purchase, meaning that you know if if you're new to this, all right, the way things used to work, or the way and and it does work in, in many places still, and I still do it in some other platforms. But basically, someone would hire you, and they would pay you a fee per hour to work uh, in the studio. Right, whether it's your studio or someone else's studio, so like fifty dollars or a hundred dollars for an hour, and then you would record for that hour, however much long time they needed you within that hour, and then once you recorded, you own the intellectual rights to that uh, voiceover, and at that point, they would then pay you to license the intellectual rights to use your voice, your voiceover that you created with them. Okay, but. So, so, so just continuing on with that. So they would do like for six months or a year, and that's still done uh, fairly regularly throughout the world. But the sites like Fiverr, what they have done is like I was talking about this is the product part is they've switched it to become more of a product. So the words that we do, it matters. And this is why I say it matters when you charge revisions. It matters. And this is why so many people also are frustrated with Fiverr because uh, a lot of people who've been in the business for a while, they don't, they're, um, and, and rightly, un, I, rightly so, they, they, they haven't taken the time to look at what the model is actually doing. So you're no longer, when you go for a word, Word-based project, you are only paid for those words, right? So if I get paid a hundred dollars, okay, to do fifty words, and it takes me three, you know, it takes me five to ten minutes, right? I made a hundred dollars in five to ten minutes, okay. Because it's based on the word count, and that product becomes the word count, not intellectual property, okay, licensed over time. And when you go up a level, the multiples, you, you're like given multiples and stuff. That has to do with packages. So basically, it used to be that if you were on Fiverr and you wanted to order 150 words from someone and you wanted the basic, all right? So there's basically three different packages that you can have. And by the way, this is separate from the voiceover category. So if you're on the voiceover category, you're not even going to use this. But on every other part of Fiverr, it's it's set up as gig packages. You could – or so you could off – like you could uh, basic – Package might be, you know, I'll do 150 words, uh, not edited, you know what I mean, just raw file. And I'll deliver it to you in 24 hours, okay? And let's say they wanted 450 words. So they would order three multiples of the 150 well, word gig or 150 word package, right? The basic package. That's how that worked and that's how it used to be. Okay, um, but again, they don't do that anymore on the voiceover section. So, John, John, I'm not sure if you're asking uh, if, like, in a different play, pl- like, are you in a different section of Fiverr looking to use the gig bundle package? Uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on what you exactly are looking to do with that. But if you are, you know, you just want to. Well, well let me let me read it again just to make sure I didn't miss it. I used it for narration to price range different word counts. All right. Uh, do you recommend just separate gigs instead of the gig bundle package? Well, first off, I do. Okay, I see what you're saying. I do recommend separate gigs. Okay, and at this point, again with the net, you should put out as many gigs as you can. You really should. I know there are some people out there who say you shouldn't do that and you should only put out one or two gigs and you should really focus in on them. And uh, I, I don't ever feel it's my place to say other people are wrong because I just don't be I don't believe that because I think there I think there are many things that work for many different people. But I can just tell you from my point of view, it has always made more sense and I've always made more money when I cast a wider net. 
Okay, especially, especially when the numbers on Fiverr continue to grow, meaning that, you know, uh, a couple years ago, there was, you know, only, you know, maybe nine or 10,000 voice actors or gig offerings on Fiverr. Now there's almost 14,000. Okay, these are growing, which means that you're going to have to compete against more people. And there are only a few spots, which, by the way, with everything going on in the world, I don't know if this is still going to happen. But, you know, you've got to pay attention to Fiverr's, you know, has remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. They're looking at releasing the new um, the new system on Fiverr to where you can actually pay for ad placement on Fiverr and you know we, we haven't got all the details yet on how that's going to how that's going to happen or when exactly it's going to roll out but it was talked about sometime during summer so that's just something to again focus on okay to, to be aware of that so I would recommend that you put out different gigs but you know start with like the categories you know start with the categories there's there's nine different categories from video narration, podcasting, e-learning, video game, character dubbing, radio, TV. Um, you know, there's no, I know there's I, I, I probably missed one or two, but there's nine different ones. OK, start with the categories or start out with with funny character voices or start off with. A, a, and by the way, Fiverr was set up this way to begin with. Right. Fiverr was set up for a place where you could go and find unique things that were just not accessible anywhere else. They just weren't around. So, you know, that's what the platform really shines at is people finding unique things. All right. So so make sure that, you know, you don't be afraid to even go deeper in that. Like I'll offer, you know, uh, a wizard or a witch or a warlock or something. You know what I mean? Like people look for those things. They really do, because I've done lots of voices, pirates. I've done tons of pirate narration for uh, video game apps and um uh, uh, cartoons and YouTube uh, cartoon, all kinds of, I mean, I've done so many different characters for different things through Fiverr, okay, because it's an easy place to go find a multitude of different things that it, that, that they, that the gigs are specifically set up to you to be able to offer that as opposed to going to like voices.com where you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of voice actors with a picture of themselves and you just got to sift through all of that mess. Do you understand? So we want to be specialists so people can be like, oh, I want a wizard. You're doing a wizard. I love it. I'm being the cowboy. Who said I was a cowboy? Rudy. I'm doing the cowboy, Rudy. All right. So, you know, maybe you're a cow. Maybe you do a cowboy. All right. Um, or maybe you do different accents. You know, you do it a Russian. That's I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> All right. But anyways, uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Um, Zach says, yes, thank you. You'll make uh, I'll make sure it all goes through Fiverr. Cool, man. Score more. Always let people pay you half before and half after the job is done. I got trolled a lot by not letting them do that, uh, but not letting them do that. Uh, score. Score, I love, okay, so um, score, I actually use this very thing that you're talking about when I'm working, well, not anymore, w excuse me, when I'm working with audiobooks, I used to do half in the beginning and half on the end. Now I have completely switched to, they pay me everything up front. Uh, I've not had any pushback on it from the, my, my current customers, but uh, through Fiverr, like the platform, you can't, uh, you can't regulate that from a, through a lot of the platforms, but uh, I, I totally agree with your thinking score, and I, I I used to do that more. Now I do all up front. Okay, so thank you for that comment, man. Uh, let's see, artists, uh, what's up, artists? Good to be, good to have you here, man. Uh, uh, I know we had somebody over. We had Mooney Vo on Instagram says, "How do you spell out what you just said regarding prices to many new Fiverr buyers?" intellectual property usage etc as most small businesses people have no idea about this mooney great question so I'll tell you exactly what i do all of us have the requirements page and that is what people after they purchase from us they buy well first and foremost okay you've got to have as much information 
on as many places as Fiverr allows you to have this in order to let people know and educate them. So you are right, Mooney. The, most people on Fiverr are going to come, especially solopreneurs, freelancers, and they're not going to know that they need a commercial rights or they need rights from us or they need to buy out stuff. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it can be confusing. And I've seen people do different things. I know some people who just price their gigs higher so they don't even have to uh, mess with all of that. But I don't, I don't like to, I personally don't like to do that. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work for other people. So this is what I do. First off, I start and make sure that in my description, I always let them know to check out the FAQs and to make sure if they, if they need to have commercial or broadcast rights to check that out. Now, they might not know what that is, but all of a sudden they get an aha moment. Well, what is that? Do I need that? Then if they go down on, we're talking about on the front, you know, on your gig page, right? They're going to see that there is an offering for those in my extra section, all right? And they'll be like, well, I still don't know what these are. As you scroll down, I have put an explanation in my FAQs. You must fill out all of your FAQs. There are 10 of them. Fiverr looks very highly, and they may, it's very important to Fiverr as well as a customer that you fill out the frequently asked questions section. In that, you fill out what is commercial rights? What are broadcast rights? Do you, do I need, you know, like you put down, you ask a question and then you, you answer. Do I need commercial rights? Do I need broadcast rights? When the commercial rights, I literally say, basically, I mean, you can even go to my gig and check out what I say. ATP CRE is what I am on Fiverr. But I literally basically say, you know, if you are promoting your business in any way through non-paid channels, you must have commercial rights. Okay, business, brand, anything. All right. And then if you broadcast rights, if you are promoting your business using paid advertising, okay, whether it's through YouTube, a radio ad, a TV ad, then you must use broadcast rights. But here's the thing. It is set up in perpetuity, meaning that it is an unlimited buyout. It is not a licensing deal. So they, it has to be with the understanding for us that they are buying out the entire thing. And to them, they probably are not even thinking that they need to license something, right? They didn't come to Fiverr to license something. So, you know, that's, that's what you as, as we have to know. So at that point, they say, oh, all right, all right. And, but they're, maybe they're still not sure. So then they purchase from you. And then when they purchase, they get uh, uh, sent to the requirements page. And this is where they have to fill in their, uh, you know, they have to send like the script to you in any directions. In that page, this is my secret. I also include, do you need commercial rights? I spell out what it is. And then here's the, here is the magic sauce. I put yes. I put multiple answer, yes or no. And then I make it mandatory for them to answer. And the coolest thing is, is that Fiverr creates two little bubbles. They have to click yes or they have to click no. And then if you notice, when you get the order, the only thing that shows up on the order page that you get and the customer gets is what they have filled out on the requirements page. I'm going to tell you why this is possible. Because it is a visual representation of them saying yes I need commercial rights or broadcast rights, or no, I don't need commercial broadcast rights or commercial or broadcast rights. And because of that, that allows you then, well, lack of a better word, leverage, okay, that you have to say, listen, you, you know, you need it. Now, if they've purchased it, purchased a gig from you, and then you notice that they put, yes, I do need commercial rights, but they hadn't bought it because they didn't know, then you can nicely send them an extra. I do that often. Or what happens a lot of times to me is people will come through, purchase their stuff, read my stuff, and then purchase the extra. Also, uh, what happens sometimes because of that is people purchase, they realize, and then they say, oh, I didn't even realize I needed that. I can't do that. Then I have the option of working with them. And saying, listen, you know, I understand this is your first time. It's okay for me to waive the rights for you this time because I want to help out and I want to build that relationship with you. You can decide to do that or not. Okay. But it is a powerful tool that has increased my uh, average price well above $70 in order. So I'm very pleased with that. That's a secret for you that will change your business forever. So hopefully that helped out, Mooney. 
Yeah, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, da, da, da. Artist says, okay, John John says, thank you, Anthony. I'll make sure to add multiple gigs. And yes, the category I chose was audiobook production for my narration bundle package. And that's okay too, John John. I recommend being on multiple ones. All right. So if that's the particular case, what you may want to do is, you know, offer up to, you know, you could do like one hour you know, two hours or three hours or gig multiples, or maybe you just offer one hour at that rate, like a basic, like it's one package for one hour and they have to buy multiples. So if it's like a five hour gig, they got to buy, you know, five of your one hours. Does that make sense? Um, So, but see, that's where the words come into. That's why I like the words better, but it's good to be, John John brought up a good point. um, And, and I want to, um, Expand upon that. It's good to be in different places, also in different categories on Fiverr, outside of just voiceover. Okay, because again, people are going to find you different places, and the more you can be, the better. All right, uh, let's see. Da-da-da. Rudy says, LOL, VO Jim. What's up? Hey, Anthony. Now that I'm working from home, I finally can watch you live. (laughs) That's awesome, man. All right. Embodied Entertainment. Trying to completely rebrand myself. Should I market my old brand until I am done with the new brand? Or should I put all my effort into hurrying up, finalizing, and creating the new brand? All right, Embodied Entertainment. I'm going to be square with you, my friend. Uh, And I don't know what you're doing to market your brand or whatever. But I will tell you this. Making sure right now that your priorities are leading you to generate the most income possible for you in the quickest time frame is imperative more now than ever. So try not to waste too much time coming up with the magic brand or the magic copy and material that's going to, you know, that someone's going to want to, you know, start crying after they listen to your story and give you an Academy Award. We, what I want you to do is focus more on piggybacking, and this is just, this is, and I'll, I'll preface this with saying this is just my opinion. Many other people have different opinions, but my opinion is one vital aspect of your business that you should spend a great amount of time, especially now more than ever, is piggybacking off of the efforts uh, an extremely high amount of money that these websites are being able to put out marketing to get yourself out there. You got to get samples out there. You got to get your your profiles out there so that people finding you ever. I've had people find me all over the place. Okay, I mean all these. I've done work on on multiple platforms, and sure, maybe one platform I did a couple hundred dollars this month. But you add that up over 20, 30 platforms, and all of a sudden, you're making quite a nice amount of money. Okay, so I like the brand. I, I, I think it's important to tell a story. Okay, that's important. Uh, and But I would, I would not worry so much about how good it is, and sooner or later, you got to just you got to go because I don't want you to spend too much time because I know from my opinion, it happens to me. It has happened to me in the past. Like it became a crutch and I was like, I just got to get this right before I do anything else because everything else is dependent upon this. It's like a trap that we fall into. So I just don't want you to fall into that trap. OK, um, so that's that's why that was all that whole thing there. All right. Um, and then I would ask, too, why? Why are you trying to rebrand yourself? You know, like what what is you know, is there a purpose beyond rebranding yourself? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Academy Award joke was one. Uh, Rudy, latest Anthony, gotta go adulting. I hear ya. I'll catch the rest later. Absolutely. Thank you, Rudy. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And, um, you know, if you have any more questions or comments, real quick, post them. But other than that, thank you uh, for all that you do. Made it through week one, I suppose, of quarantine, you know, or just being in our houses. <laughs> um, and uh, I went out yesterday grocery shopping, and it was just weird. You know, I actually put on a mask, and I felt like people were looking at because many people of mine said they didn't have masks on. And uh, not that they're supposed to, but I put on a mask, you know, because I'm trying to be a good citizen. And <laughs> people are staring at me. I'm sure they probably thought I was, you know, sick. But uh, that was an interesting thing um, to be in. And it just seems weird right now to me, at least. Uh, But I was able to get groceries for the family. And uh, that's a good thing. So please be safe. 
If you get a chance, subscribe. We're so close to 1,000. And by the way, I'll also post down, if you're interested in growing your Fiverr business, the Fiverr Elite Group is really just an incredible, incredible group that we meet every Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, all replays are free. And by the way, if you join, you actually get like 50 hours of content now over the past uh, I mean, it's almost been a year since we've been uh, building this thing and doing different stuff. So it's a wonderful opportunity to grow your fiber business. And uh, it's pretty inexpensive uh, a month. So I'd love for you to be there. But I'll put a link below or you can find it at aviosjourney.com. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Okay. Please be safe. Enjoy your family. And I will see you next week. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.